Hey everyone, Jason here. Seems like anytime I make a comment like, I'm going to be able to make more videos or I'm going to be able to post more often, it is a complete, total, utter mistake and it just shoots me right in the foot. When, the, when I say stuff like that, I get floods of 20, 30, and 40 devices. It, it's, it's just ridiculous. So uh, today I'm going to be having a look at an iPhone 6 board that was in here because it won't charge the battery. Uh, this is from a really reliable shop, so I imagine that if they were going to send it here, for not charging the battery. They've already tried simple things like dock connector battery and stuff like that. So I'm gonna switch you over to the microscope here and let you have a look and see what I'm looking at. Ah, I'm just kidding, that's the wrong board. Kick that aside. Here's the board that they actually sent. This shop sends pristine stuff. I mean, I, I when I unbox things from these people, I don't have to worry about what I'm getting out of the box. I, I, I do, I, I am concerned that I don't have a water damage tag on this, on this board. So uh, let's have a look at this thing and see what we're up against. First thing I'm going to do, I don't care how reputable they are. We are going to verify the problem. I'm going to take this PCB. I'm going to put it in a test housing that has a known good dot connector. And I'm hesitating because I realize I've mixed up my iPhone 6 batteries here, so I cannot say known good battery. But I can say we're going to fix something by God. I hope we're going to fix it. Alright, so there we're in a housing. Let's brush the debris from the last three data recovery jobs off to the back of my bench here. Oh my gosh, it just looks like a pile of dust on the bench. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at these couple of batteries here. I'm going to lay these two here upside down. I'm going to take my meter and put the meter in voltage mode. And I'm going to show you that. This battery reads 0 0.002 volts. That battery is thoroughly dead. This battery reads 0 0.001 volts. So that battery there is also thoroughly dead. So, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and connect a screen to this, this lovely, lovely iPhone. And we're going to try a thoroughly dead battery. Leave it up to me to start a video on charging issues without a lightning cable within reach. That's just, th that's, that's me. That, that's the kind of stuff I do. Alright, let's, this one, this one. Time to order, uh, time to order cables again. These things tend to grow legs and walk off, and I wind up running really, really thin in a hurry. All right, so we've got this thing hooked up to some five volts, five voltage here. We're going to uh, let's back up before we connect that charger there. Let's get on VBAT and see what VBAT's telling us. VBAT should be telling us 0 0.0000000 volts. We're going to connect our charger, and we get. 0, 0.00000 volts. Now we're going to weasel in here and we're going to check the 5V USB line and we get 5 volts USB. So I see that we do have 5 volts USB coming into the phone, but we still get 0. 0.00000000 volts. So let's go ahead and disconnect our 5 volts USB. I'm going to disconnect the battery. And just for giggles and shits, I'm going to grab a battery that is a little, just a tiny, tiny bit more than 0 0.0000000 volts. Um, not this one. This battery, this battery here is 4.2, 4 4.3, 4 point something volts, but it will not power an iPhone on. The iPhone will always say that it's dead. It'll always show you to charge the battery, and this is the type of battery that causes overcharging, I think. But I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I just have it marked with an X, and it's got some communication issues. I'm, I've got some camera issues. I'm chopping my head off. Alright, this one is a no-go. Let's see what we get out of this battery here. I should have had my shit together before I started this video, but um, when you're moving through this many devices, it is really hard to stay organized and ultimately, seriously, 0 0.0001. Okay, so we'll add that to the stack. I wonder if my meter's working. Like, I Could all of these batteries really be flat dead? Of course they can. You know why? Because I said I was going to record a video. And since I said I was going to record a video, 
all of my batteries are just magically flat dead. You're a 6S. Huh. Siri. Uh, what? What? Okay, we don't care if it'll power on the phone. Let's <laughs> let's see what this battery reads. This battery here, what the? Hmm. Okay, so we get 4.1 volts on that battery there. And at 4.1 volts with this battery, this phone will not prompt to boot. It will, well, it'll prompt, but it's going to think it's going to think that the battery's too dead like that and mind you we're at 4.1 volts remember so let's open this thing up and we know we got a battery here with a little bit of voltage can't believe that whole stack of batteries are all sitting at zero volts like what like one of them is out of my test housing that I was just using that's makes me question everything I know about life so this thing has actually went down we're at 4.02 volts and that is with a battery that had four volts in it and charger connected. So we're gonna disconnect our charger. We're gonna see what the battery line goes to here. 4.000, let's reconnect our charger. 3.999, nothing's happening here. The thing is lighting up the screen to say, hey, you need to connect it, you need to charge the battery for a while. And the very fact that it's lighting the backlight and lighting stuff up here is causing it to sit here and, and drain the battery. So uh, this thing is not going anywhere. And being as at the shop that sent it here, tested it in their housing. Let's see, I'm gonna sit these over here. So you, here's my stack of bad ones here. And here's my one, uh, this, okay. This one's definitely bad. The phone won't boot with this one in, even though it's got four volts. These batteries are batteries that I've been using but today, since I want to do the video, they're all sitting at zero volts. So let's get this thing out of the housing. Um, since I know that my dot connector here is good, or most likely good, uh, I know the shop that sent them here pretty well. They just wouldn't have sent it here unless they've already tried this really, really, really well. Because who wants to ship things around the world and stuff like that if you don't have to? So we're going to do a TriStar replacement on this and see if TriStar will get the job done. If it don't get the job done, we're gonna try a couple other things, but step one is TriStar. Now I gotta say, on the iPhone 6S, or um, on the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, um, 6S, 6S Plus, it's not as commonly TriStar as it was on the fifth gen phones. Like the fifth gen phones, TriStar repair was like a really, really, really high success rate. And on these, you wind up having to do a little more. You wind up replacing Tigris and, um, you know, changing transistor, changing other stuff. You have to troubleshoot it, which for me, troubleshooting a battery charging issue on an iPhone 6 is replace this cluster of stuff and have a nice day. It's, it takes you less time. All right, we're going to get through this one and... Let's see what happens here. Before I go through the trouble of warming this up, let me switch back to my other iron. I am upgrading to either a second single channel station or a multi-channel station, but that is getting put off just a little bit longer. We'll be okay though. I've been living like this for a year. Hacko FX 951, it's been in service for a year and has not had a single day of not being used for a year. That's a nice piece of equipment. All right, let's get the sh shield off of this thing. Yes. 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 Ah, I should have already dispensed some tape. Yes. Okie dokie, we're gonna leave the hot air run. Put this board over here in reach of the microscope. Normally, whenever I've got my shit together, I would have already got me a piece of tape off of here because I do tape these down for this little microsurgery. And I am hurrying a little bit because I like 
to keep the board hot for this one. All right, I'm going to switch you over to the microscope so that you can see our TriStar I see here. There's TriStar. And I'm going to begin whacking this thing off the board. So I keep the board hot. Is that the right blade? It's good enough. And I'm going to saw around this thing. This glue here is really, really, really soft. I call this overfill, but it is, it is pretty well underfill. I mean, it, it does go under the chip. I still call it overfill just because it's soft. You shouldn't cr scratch the board like I am. All right, so I make sure I got it pretty well carved around, and then I'm going to get under this corner here, and I'm poking at the corner ball. Am I in focus? I need to get my eyes checked. Or wait, maybe I should wear the glasses that are on top of my head. That might be a good idea. All right, so we're going to keep warming this thing up, and I'm going to keep chunking away here. Not chunking, but I'm just... I'm lightly touching the corner ball because the iPhone 6 requires a ridiculous amount of heat to take this IC off. All right, we should be about there. I see the corner ball having a little solder given. Now, I, I use just the lightest bit of pressure and gradually start lifting up on this thing. And there we lift it up and flip it off the board. Easy does it. Uh, you don't want to use it, like, you don't want to use any, like, real pressure on that. I use just enough and... The only way to figure out how much is enough is to practice it. So the right amount of pressure there is, is just enough. You pry up on that little thing just a tiny bit. That way when the solder melts, you can peel it up off the top of the glue. Just ignore these huge gouges I put in the PCB over here. It's, it, that's just, that's another, that's an artifact in the microscope. That's, I don't know what that is. All right, so, so let's grab our tweezers here and clean this up. And then we're going to grab our Q-tippy tip, clean that up. A little more cleaning. Just because I like to send them out clean. Not as clean as I used to before I got completely buried. But I still send them out clean. Where's my TriStar ICs? We are going to put a 1610A3 on this one. That is the standard IC that you find on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. I just got done putting one of these on an iPhone 5S and they work wonderfully. I've, I've now just like freely mixed and matched these things without any consequences. The only time I feel like I may have caused a consequence is like whenever I go backwards. Like if I take a 1610A1 and stick it in a phone that came out with a 1610A3 and you get a blue screen boot loop or some crazy behavior I felt like that was due to me mixing up the TriStar IC. I wasn't sure, but to solve it, I did replace the TriStar, TriStar IC with the correct version, and it did solve it, but I can't say for sure that it was me mixing it up that caused it. Um, but I have been mixing these things up freely. I just always try to use the newer version instead of an older version. I don't know if that makes any difference. Call me superstitious. Whatever the word is for that. Let's say cautious. Let, let's not say superstitious. Let's say cautious. Every damn time I try to record a video, I have to put a scratch on the PCB like that. And then everybody tells me, you shouldn't beat yourself up over those little scratches. And believe me, with some of the crap that's sent here, I know. All right, this board's cooled off quite a bit, so let's back off. Warmer up. Let's move back in now. We're waiting for this IC to start to bubble. There we go. I see some bubbles now. That little jitter you see there is because the camera's running. Nudge, make sure we're on. And we're going to back the heat off. I'm going to let this board cool just a little bit more, and then I'm going to douse it with cold alcohol. All right, switch you back over to me. That way when I stand up, it will 
chop my head off my neck. Alright, so while this thing is still pretty dang reasonably hot, I hit it with alcohol because chip quick flux gets really, really, really gooey and then hard as a rock as it cools. And when you hit it with alcohol, when it's very, very hot, it cleans off really nicely. Right, just do it once more. And used to, I would really, really nitpick about this. And I would like, if I got any amount of flux on there at all, I'd ultrasonic clean it. And But honestly, there are very rare occasions that I've ran into issues with leaving fluid with flux on the board like that. Now what it will do is it'll corrode the shit out of surrounding components. Uh, so you don't want it everywhere. But I've ran into very, very few occasions where uh, flux actually caused anomalies in, in different devices, different functions of the phone. But I think that was possibly due to debris in the flux or something that the flux had dissolved. Uh, one example is the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus headphone jack where the thing will get confused and think it's got headphones plugged into it. And then just a quick cycle through the ultrasonic cleaner fixed it. And that's after touch IC repairs. So um, I just feel like there's some things that are really, really sensitive. And I was just, I was really, really, really paranoid about leaving any kind of flux on the board. I'm going to show you what this looks like after a quick toothbrush in with alcohol. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but for crying out loud, I had to chunk glue off the outside of this TriStar IC. Only since I'm recording a video, I was sloppy and you can see I scratched up the PCB a little bit, but... Who gives a shit? This thing's going to work fine. So I'm going to switch you back over to me. Kick this out of the way here. Pick up a couple things. And what we're going to do here is we're going to grab one of these zero volt batteries and see if this thing will pop it up off of zero volts. And my bet is that it will. So um, let's put you over here. We're going to put this thing in a housing. And I'm actually only connecting the dot connector. I'm going to go ahead, just for the sake of being sure here, I'm going to connect a screen. We're going to connect our zero volt battery. And I'm going to turn on the meter here so that you can see the reading. And we still get zero volts at the battery rail. Now we're going to plug in our 5 volt USB line. I don't see backlight yet. That makes me nervous. Wait, 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 wait. No, I don't see backlight. All right, so let's see what we get now. We get 2.59, 2.6, 2.62, 3. We're getting a fairly rapid rise here. We're getting a steady, steady battery rise. Okay, I'm going to disconnect our 5 volt USB line and we're going to see how fast this battery falls. This battery is not falling very fast at all. This is actually going to be putting a decent charge on that battery. So let's check here again, 2.7 volts. If we flip this over, we really should have a battery charging icon, I think. Oh shit, Apple logo, that's not a good sign. Not at 2.7 volts, it ain't. You know what that means? You know what this means? This means... This means that this battery is a pile of garbage. Let's kick it aside. Let's grab the next one in line. We're going to see what its voltage is. Gosh, how embarrassing. All right, so this bat battery is sitting at a half a volt. We're going to connect our 5 volt USB line. This battery is now sitting at two and a half volts, 2.6 volts, 2.2.7. All right, let's let this continue to rise here. We should have a battery charging thing on the screen once it gets up high enough. Wow, how embarrassing. And here I thought I was prepared. I had my little stack of batteries ready to go. Like batteries that I use on a regular basis. <clears throat> but 
Oh wait, let's let's let that continue to charge. Batteries that I use on a regular basis, but whenever I say I'm gonna record a TriStar video, all of my batteries decide that they're just gonna be dead. Okay? This is not behaving properly. We're getting a pretty rapidly high low, high low, high low, high low, high low. Something's not right. So we're gonna disconnect this battery and we're gonna move on to our third one. Just pretend you're not watching this. Like, you should use known good batteries. Just like I thought I had. The f Seriously? Did I grab the wrong stack? I got stacks of batteries everywhere, but did I grab the wrong? No, that's the, that's my main test housing and the batteries surrounding it. Good Lord. All right, so this battery is sitting at 0.46 volts. We're gonna connect the charger. This battery is sitting at two and a half. Okay, we've got a nice steady rise. We're not getting any bouncing back and forth shit. It's just a nice, nice steady rise. Yeah, I know I should be doing this by checking the current going into the uh, dock connector, but uh, I, uh, I don't know. Sue me. I haven't spent the eight or ten dollars or whatever to um, to get a current meter that runs on the USB port. I've always done things this way, and I get a feel for battery rise, battery fall, and a feel for heat. I guess. I don't know, call me a seat of my pants kind of guy. All right, we're up to three volts, and we're still getting a nice steady rise. Now, with that sort of a rise, we're getting a good rise out of it. So now that we're getting a rise out of it, I would say that we should get a charging a, charging a battery icon on the screen, right? Um, well, you know, if if I were to connect the, um, the power volume flex up here, <clears throat> I bet you then whenever I press the... Uh, the lock button we'll get a nice battery charging icon on the screen so this thing is raising the battery because I decided I was going to do a TriStar video it decided it's going to troll me so we're up to almost three and a quarter volts according to this meter 3.18 3 3.19 3.2 so this is a nice nice steady battery rise I've disabled auto off on this meter and it's still sitting here beeping at me. It's making me think it's gonna turn itself off any minute. Now, am I really gonna sit here? Am I really gonna sit here and wait for this thing to charge the battery? Or am I gonna cut this and come back whenever the battery is, is charged? All right, this one's at 3.26 volt, 3.27. Three point two eight. I don't know why I'm reading it out loud. I'm just used to reading it out loud. You guys can see that on the screen. Okay, three point two nine. Okay, so that that's gonna charge fine. Let's let's just uh, we're gonna let this sit here and charge. Um, I have doubts that my charger is cranking out enough current for this. I'm gonna switch that. I just moved everything around again not anything in view here but the back end electricity and charging stuff and i've had to make some real efforts to get rid of hum and background noise in my ground due to wiring issues in this structure all right so that ought to be nice and loud in the headset right up against it there let's make sure we're cranking out some good power i don't trust my usb hub to charge the battery on this phone all right, so now that we're hooked up to something that is capable of kicking out two amps, let's see what our level is. All right, so we're at three and a half volts almost and climbing. This is a nice steady charge. I would expect to feel warmth, and I feel quite a bit of warmth. Like, it's, it's a decent amount. You know, it's, it's definitely putting a load on this battery or however you want to look at it, the battery is putting a load on the charge circuit. This thing is definitely charging the battery. I've got a nice steady voltage rise and I've got a warming PCB, which means I've got current. And even though it only costs 10 or $20 to buy a meter I can plug this into, I have not yet done that because I do it like this. Now, one thing that I can say that I'm planning on changing here real soon, 
I'm just, I don't know about this power and these things from a DC power supply crap. I just, I don't, this thing does an okay job, but my vision here of a decent power supply for doing this kind of work is a single cell lithium battery setup with an analog current meter and that's perfect because there you've got your 3.7 volts, 4 volts, you know, it's mine it, it'll sit at a full voltage all the time. So, I think I'm actually going to rig up a setup with iPad batteries and and use that or I'm going to spend 100 bucks or 200 bucks on a decent power supply. We'll see. So, let's see what our battery's up to here. I'm just trying to kill time because I don't want to cut this video. I am still going to do a lot of editing, but some of these general repair videos like this for the sake of me being able to get through my I've got to keep it, I've got to keep it moving, so. <clears throat> All right, our steady rise has came to a stable point here, which the battery charging stuff in here, it's, it's really smart. It'll charge the battery up to the point and it'll hold it there and then it'll, let it, you know, to check and see how much it falls. It's not just like a, it don't just hook power to the battery and charge it. There's some really smart shit going on here, so. Uh, whenever if you see the battery level come up to a point and stop don't panic and think that it's not charging because there's a good chance It's just taking its sweet ass time and see this thing is absolutely still raising our battery percentage and We're not far from getting a power on out of this phone yet. So I'm here any minute This heaping pile of iPhone 6 smoked TriStar IC should power on and this heaping pile of junk-ass battery here. Let's see this one, right? Permanent marker, baby. Oh, I can't reach it without without popping my headset. Well, maybe that pop won't be so loud since I fixed my grounding issues. And I have a small stack of junk laptops down there, and I just stepped on the corner of them. Yeah, we're going to put an X on this one because this battery is dangerous and needs disposed of. <clears throat> Any battery that will cause an iPhone 6 to sit there and, and Apple logo boot loop, that, that's bad news because they'll only Apple logo boot loop so many times before they go into DFU mode, and then your only option is to restore the software. So... Uh, we're going to kick that battery aside. These two I'm going to come back to for testing because I didn't get mad and throw them yet. I'm an idiot. I really am. I'm an idiot. All right. Let's open this thing back up. Three point seven seven volts. Oh, yeah. Plenty of warmth here. Plenty of warmth. She's going to boot any minute. Any minute. I can't believe I'm sitting here waiting on this with this much stuff to do. That is only because of the video. I would have already shuffled this thing back into the basket off to the side over here on my shelf charging and moved on, but I want to publish a TriStar video on an iPhone 6. Hopefully. I mean, so far it's TriStar. It's not always TriStar. They're getting a nice steady rise. Yay, just over 3.8 volts and we've got power on. So I guess at least that part of my meter is somewhat accurate. The ohms isn't very accurate though. We go check ohms watch. I'm going to short these straight together. Resistance mode, one ohm. It's like one whole stinking ohm right here. I, I don't think we'll get an ohm of resistance through the cables. Maybe. I don't know. All right, so we get a phone that's powered on. This phone is at 3%. Unplug charger. Plug charger in. And since I'm not going to sit here any longer and wait for that to say something other than 3%, I'm going to measure the battery and see if the voltage is rising. 
3.789, here I go again, reading it out loud, even though you can see it on the screen, except my, my blue glove on it don't, don't look all that nice, does it? 81. Two, and we are getting a nice steady trickle ebbing and flowing rise here out of the battery charger so we should be somewhere above three percent or getting ready to change from three percent now now we are at four percent so we're going to go ahead and slide the power off because this is a successful repair we're going to pop the shield back on here and kick this one aside as repaired. Oh, I forgot I put its cable under my battery. That was that was nice. All right, so we're going to hold our cable out of the way, turn the hot air on. And I'm trying to heat this thing up fairly rapidly, and I'm watching for the solder around the edges to melt. By touching it, I can see it. Okay, the bottom's melted. So now I know I'm about there, so I'm going to hold this whole thing down. Spending quite a bit of time up here near TriStar because that area is ridiculous. Okay. I don't know why I always put these on and then pick it straight up. That's just, I'll never learn. Okay, so well now we're going to reconnect this antenna cable. There we go. <clears throat> okay, and that is a repaired PCB. Okay, the next item on the list here is an iPhone 6 Plus that was sent here because it would not charge the battery. And we are going to see what we're up against on this one. For some reason I thought I was going to do back-to-back -back six is, but since I'm doing a video, the thing in the package there just magically changed from an iPhone 6 to a 6 Plus. Uh, just due to the very, very fact that I'm going to record a video. Now, the one thing that worries me about this is that it's an iPhone 6 Plus, and what if this thing has touch IC failure? Uh, and what if this thing has touch IC failure, like, after I work on it? So, <laughs> why don't I turn that off? Okay, let's see what we're up against here. We are going to pop this thing into a housing. We're going to hook up our dot connector I am going to plug a screen into it choose this one okay now this is a known good iPhone <laughs> a known good battery damn thing you're known good now be good okay and we're going to get in here on something and see what we got. So this battery is showing 3.75 volt arenies. Now let's see what we get when we hook up our 5 volt rail. I got prompt to boot. There we go. Have, see Apple logo. Pull the screen back down. This battery is now at, don't fall out of there now, 3.5 volts. So the voltage has actually fell considerably 
uh, either since the boot started or since connecting the charger. We're, we're going to find out here. I'm going to say by the temperature of the CPU under my finger that this thing is still booting. It's starting to get a little more hot than I would care to feel it get. The CPU is actually really, really hot. Let's see what we got on our screen. It did complete a boot. Okay. Making me nervous about some of these low voltage lines being partially shorted and sitting here baking up a storm. Okay, so our battery level since boot is 3.67, 3.68. Now it's rising, but that could be because of processes and things on the phone finishing and the phone drawing less of a load. That could be why the battery is rising there. So I'm going to look at percentage right now. The registered battery percentage is at 20. So I'm going to put the screen to sleep here. Wait, did that register charging? Did it show that it was charging, just not raising percentage? No, I'm nuts. It's okay. This thing is not charging when it's powered on. No, this is a not charging when powered on phone. Okay, so let's tackle the charging circuit on this and see what we come up with. not get too far ahead of ourselves. Well, it did prompt a boot. Um, being as that we had a prompt to boot, I know our 5 volt USB line is there because that's where the prompt to boot comes from. If you just take a, a board that's got a battery hooked to it and then you use a supply or whatever and put 5 volts on the 5 volt USB line, it'll prompt it to boot. Um, so I'm going to make an edu very educated guess that the 5 volt USB line is present. Unless something like grabbed it and pulled it down shortly after. I don't think that's the case. This is a classic not charging after it's powered on, which can be an absolute nightmare or it can be simple. Let's, let's see what this one's going to be. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Don't fuck with me, iPhone board. I need you done so I can look smart. And you know, since I'm recording a video, there's no way in hell two in a row are going to be TriStar, right? Yes. Yes. All right, so let's get this thing anchored down here. <clears throat> right off the bat and do our diagnostics TriStar IC replacement somebody out there has got some tricks up their sleeves on figuring out whether or not TriStar is bad but from some of the crap that I've ran into man all bets are off like you don't know if it's TriStar and let's see we're going to use this one I think we'll use this one this time it's just easier to replace it unless I measure and 5 volts USB is not there, uh, you know, and I figure out something's pulling the USB line to ground. You know, there's things that will stop me from replacing Tri TriStar, but once I verify that we actually have charging voltage into the phone and nothing's happening, TriStar is typically my next step. I think I did get lucky a couple of times whenever I didn't have any TriStar ICs in stock and I just replaced Tigris and the thing was fixed, which... As finicky as this stuff can be, just heating something nearby could have been what actually fixed it. So There's not really a written book on this stuff, and everybody is stuck fending for themselves. So it, it, it is actually really important to, 
to share information online. Am I really going to scratch two of these in a row? I don't ever scratch them. Just these two are the only two I've ever scratched. All right, so I'm going to get, make sure we're in focus here because I'm going to do the same magical move. It's my anti-tri-star lifted pad technique. I don't like that blade. Okay, so I'm waiting for a ball to melt. I can just see a little solder there on the edge. There we go. Nothing too radical though. If you pull up on any of these ICs and they are not ready to be pulled on, you are going to pull things that you did not want to pull on and you'll either make your repair miserable or you will send it to its grave. Boy, some Seinfeld has been heavy on my mind. I haven't watched Seinfeld since I was a teenager, but I think I've seen all of them. We used to watch Seinfeld every night at my friend's house that we stayed at. And in every moment of every day, I mean, wait a minute, I said that wrong. In every day, there is a Seinfeld moment. I'm trying to get my wife to start watching Seinfeld with me so that she'll understand some of, some of my jokes. There are some things that you just can't unsee, and once they've been seen or heard, they change your life forever. Seinfeld is full of those things. All right, here we go. Are we going to get lucky on... Back off a little bit because this board did cool considerably, so we're going to work it up sort of slow. I don't think I've ever actually cracked anything on accident by radically changing temperature, but I've also always been really careful about it too. Okay, I think we're sat, almost. Okay, there's our TriStar IC replaced. The, uh, the ball at this bottom left corner seems to always be the last one to melt, and I bet you if we looked and seen it, it's, it's ground. Okay. So we are going to uh, alcohol this off and then we're going to pop it back into the housing and see if it will register a charge while the phone is on because this one will prompt a boot which means we got our 5 volt USB line there but once it booted it would not charge the battery and I have had some before that after they booted, you could slide the power off and let the thing shut down. And if you check that battery line while the power is off, some of them are sitting there raising the battery. So you can actually use the phone as long as you charge it when it's powered off. But if you reach a point where it's, uh, you get into a situation sometimes where you can't keep it from powering on, so it winds up not being not being feasible. So okay. Let's spray this thing off just like we did on the last one. It's, it's so beautiful. It's, it's marvelous. All right. Fucking thing. All right. Don't get me wrong. I do love what I do. But some days, here's what I was looking at. It's work. Nice big signature scratch there on the board. God. Nobody cares about that scratch. Quit talking about it. Okay. So now we're going to pop this dude in a housing. Let's see what we get. Yo, 
screeny screen. Battery. And stab myself in the finger with my newly sharpened probe. I put them under the microscope and sharpen them with a file. All right, 3.75 Volterini's. And whenever we connect our 5 volt USB line, we should get a prompt to boot. I see backlight, so let's assume that this phone is booting. Three point eight five. I don't like it when they bounce around like that, but we're booting, so we're not gonna we're not gonna nitpick just yet. My probe on the battery line slid. This is dangerous down here. All right, I got a charge connect tone. It dong. Did you hear it? I don't know if you heard that or not, but I got a charge connect tone. I'm more. I'm not so worried about that charge connect tone as I am this battery voltage rising because that's what that's what I really want to see. 3.87, 3.88, 3 3.89, 3.9, this thing's charging the battery. Huh. Well maybe that's what I should do. From now on, whenever I'm going to do a iPhone 6 or 6 Plus not charging the battery phone, I should just do it in front of a camera and then they'll all wind up being TriStar. All right, this one now shows, this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, this one now shows a lightning bolt up there that it is charging and it is 20%. We're gonna set that down for just a minute and make sure we see 21%. And we will see how this goes. Now this, uh, this customer has written their job IDs on these plates, so they are obviously gonna know who they are and hopefully they don't watch this and say, that son of a bitch charged me $300. I'm just kidding. I don't charge that much for TriStar. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure there's some out there that would like to. There's a lot of them out there doing it for like 30 and 40 bucks. But when it's not TriStar, it can get a little more hairy. And it can get time consuming. All right, 3.92 volts. We've obviously got a decent battery rise here because remember we were at 3.75 and we should have decent heat, but now we also have processing power being used. Uh, so we've got, we've got normal temperature here building up. And remember we were at 20%. Look at what we're at now, 20%. <laughs> so we're gonna keep waiting. I don't know, maybe I will cut some of this out, we'll see. I've got a lot of cool things planned here for this channel, but uh, JobQ has got to come first. I've only been able to post about once a week here for a while because I've got to keep, got to keep the JobQ moving. Um, it's essential for my survival, and it's not all entirely about money. It's a lot about keeping the JobQ moving because if I don't keep the queue moving, people will come and they will drag me outside and they will beat me to death with socks and bars of soap. So um, got to keep it moving. All right, yay, we're at 21, 21%, can you see 21, 21, there it is. And just for the, uh, the sake of this video, I'm gonna come in and check that battery line once more and make sure we're above 3.92. We're still hanging right at it, which is actually a good sign. You don't want it to just run right up if it just runs right up to, to operating voltage, you've got, you've got a bad battery. Um, and that's the way I judge whether or not a battery is good. I look at how fast it charges and how fast it drains. If you hook, you know, just get rid of all the shit. Get rid of all, all the circuitry aside. You know, if you ignore all that crap and you get right to the tabs on the battery and, or right to the posts on whatever kind of battery it is that you're dealing with and you check the voltage there, and let's say it's low and you hook power to it and that that voltage is able to just go whoop right up high without consuming any real current that's a bad cell and those what they'll do they'll ramp up really fast and when you try to put a load on them they'll also fall on their face really fast too um, and that's that's just the nature of a, a bad cell so um, this thing is at
3.93 and we're a nice floating voltage there with warmth building up this thing's doing a nice job charging the battery and it is showing still 21 percent but it is it is raising the battery so i am going to go ahead and we're going to slide the power off should i check touch ic failure you know i should let's grab a no this is that screen see just the very fact that i opened my mouth made the touch quit working did you see that as soon as i said something the touch quit working and that's this that's the screen that's this will be my last week on these test screens that i'm using so we are going to move right on past that this board will get tested one more time on its way out the door i am not going into that right now so let this, let's get this thing out of here and we're going to pop the bottom shield back on it because that completes this repair. I even say the word touch and that screen quit working. Like, <laughs> okay. Now, since we're doing a video, go on there nice and crooked now. Son of a bitch. Okay, I see melting at the bottom. You just kind of get a feel of them. And I try to get it to go down all the way around and then cool all the way around. And we're good there. So we'll just lightly hold on it. I'm not pushing on it. I mean, I'm just lightly holding on it. There is a lot of really, really, really fragile shit under that shield. So don't push on it. And then send it here with everything broken, please. All right, I'm not pleased with the way that went down up here. We've got a little gap, so I come right back in at it. See, this is that corner that I was talking about, our TriStar corner. This area of the board is ridiculous. Like, I don't know what it is about that spot, but it is able to absorb and dissipate so much heat. You could throw this thing at the fucking surface of the sun and everything on this board would melt, but the TriStar IC would still be hooked to the PCB. It, it wouldn't move it. The TriStar IC would still be right where it was at. All right, so let's put our little antenna cable back in place. And we are going to call that a completed repair. So two TriStar, two not charging issues in a row, two TriStars in a row. If it wasn't TriStar, I wouldn't have dug in troubleshooting it. I would have went ahead and replaced Tigris. I would have replaced the little, um, the little tr gatekeeper, I call it, which is what, Q1403 or something. I would have replaced that next. There's, there's a couple of things that I just, like monkey work that I do first. And then if it don't charge the battery, then it's like, okay, what the fuck's wrong with this thing? Um, but I don't know. Most of the time it is TriStar. Sometimes it's not. Um, this was two TriStars in a row. I'm going to call that a success here. And I am going to move on to my next repair, which I'm not going to video. Uh, but then the repair after that, I'm probably going to video. So we'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for your likes, your subscribes. I'm going to keep them coming um, as often as I can. But whenever things are really, really, really cluttered, I just uh, I gotta you know, I gotta get gotta get through the job queue because that's that's really what pays the bill. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.